Interviews with Farmac are about as rare as a Hector's dolphin, writes Rachel Smalley this week. And Rachel, what you're saying here is that Farmac's accountable to no man, apparently. Yeah, that's right. And I think that's been the case since around the 1990s. Um, I think it was Peter Dunn who pointed out that they are unique in that not only do they control the funds for uh, pharmaceuticals, they also make the decisions around what to fund, which is unique and offers little insight. Um, in theory, they are accountable to the Ministry of Health or the Minister, but in reality, they still operate in a silo. And outside of uh, Health NZ, they still will sit they sit outside of that body again. Um, their objectives haven't changed. They don't have to answer to anyone. And I think what I find most frustrating, Maria, is that um, the report came out, the Pharmac review, which is the first time since the 90s, since its establishment, that Pharmac has ever been reviewed. And still, despite there being some serious criticisms around the governance of Pharmac, the chair, Steve Mahari, and the CEO, Sarah Fitt, still haven't spoken to the media and by all intents and purposes look like they will continue to decline interview requests. Yeah, now you know more about this than I do, but I was interested to read you saying they have no measurable objectives, they have no medicine strategy and no KPIs. That seems extraordinary in this day and age. Yeah, absolutely. I think when you uh, look at what uh, the objectives are for Pharmac, Pharmac's objectives are very much positioned around cost. Get help as many people as you can for the cheapest price. And that was, you know, back in the 1990s when pharmaceutical companies were uh, a bit of a rort in New Zealand. But a lot has changed since then. And, you know, those objectives mean that they bypass uh, the rare disorders, they bypass a lot of the chronic diseases as well. And those objectives are incredibly old fashioned. But there is no uh, medicine strategy with which to guide their thinking. There's no, um, you know, objective to allocate or, or fund a certain number of immunotherapies or to address our two biggest cancer killers, for example, lung cancer. 32, 34 people a, a week die on average in New Zealand from lung cancer. We still don't fund the standard of care medicine, K Truda. And although there has been a request for K Truda or Merck Sharp and Dome to engage with Pharmac, you know, months on, we still have had no decision and it's unlikely we're told that there will be a decision this year. Bowel cancer, second biggest uh, cancer killer. No objectives around whether or not Pharmac needs to be addressing uh, those areas. What about rare disorders? What about some of the medical devices, particularly to treat children, EpiPens, um, and also for allergies and also continuous glucose monitors for infants with type 1 diabetes? So no objectives... Um, nothing really in line with the Ministry of Health. And I always find it staggering that there is no medicine strategy to guide them in any capacity. But they're not alone and the boss is not fronting up, is what you're saying here. There seems to be a new culture within the current government of uh, just, just not making themselves available, particularly for long-form TV interviews, which can be quite revealing, can't they? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think um, the public sector, the public service, um, public servants rather, the leaders of some of those ministries have always managed to sort of sidestep fronting up to the media. Um, the only uh, example of that which you know bucks the trend is Dr. Ashley Bloomfield, of course, when he was you know essentially shoulder tapped by the Prime Minister to step up throughout the COVID response. But I find it pretty extraordinary when you look at what's happened, for example, in the last few days with the um, the inland revenue and their payment for the cost of living payment, uh, that money has gone out, you know, over at least $7 million has gone to people who are ineligible or migrants who are now living in other countries. You would think the Commissioner of Inland Revenue would front up to that. Clearly, his ministry has given guidance to the minister, to David Parker, and his ministry has failed in that area as well. Has he fronted? No. All we get, Maria, is written statements, which is you can't challenge that as a journalist, and it's always attributed to a spokesperson. And that is right across uh, the public sector right now, the public service. And it's super, super frustrating to journalists because you just can't challenge people. And the media really are going to need to come up with some sort of a plan to deal with this, aren't they, given that we've got a general election in about a year's time? Yeah, I think if you want to see um, the relevance and the importance, if you like, of um, encouraging and enabling politicians, uh, 
uh, and those who are, need to be held to public account into long form interviews, then have a look at Jack Tam's interview with Q&A on TV One last Sunday. It was really telling, I think. Um, interestingly, at the start of that interview, he said that the Prime Minister's office had told them they would have two interviews with the Prime Minister this year. That was at the start of this year. Now, that is interesting in itself, that you would dictate that the political programme Q&A on the state broadcaster would be allocated two interviews with the Prime Minister. Normally, it's ad hoc and as and when you need the Prime Minister to appear. Um, and the very first appearance wasn't until July 31st this year. Now, if you watch Tame in that interview, um, for 20 minutes, he goes back and forth with her, and it allows him to really challenge her, he challenges her on things like whether the government's failed on child poverty, on housing, um, on parts of the COVID response, on homelessness. And the Prime Minister really doesn't have an answer for him other than to say that she will never stop and neither will Labour being uh, aspirational in terms of what it wants to um, achieve in its time in government. And it doesn't. she doesn't really answer many of the questions he puts to her. But that in itself is telling. And you have to provide those long-form platforms um, and as, as, a, as a prime minister and as a politician to allow yourself to be held to account to, you know, that's part of being in public office. That's why it's so important. And as you say, I think the media has to come together before the next election and make it an election issue. You know, whoever comes into government has to make themselves available, has to make themselves available for long form interviews as well. So that the media can, you know, re re regain, if you like, some credibility because at the moment, you know, the journalists, the media take it, get a hard time for not holding people to account, but we can't get access to those people. Rachel Smalley, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Maria.